What is up guys, Alpine Gremlin again here with some more World of Tanks. About a month ago I put up a video called How I Proc, in which I showed you guys how uh, how to play Prokhorovka in your medium tanks, or at least what I do. And I go to the middle a lot um, in my medium tanks, but what do you do if you are in, say, a heavy tank? Um, where is there for you to go as I adjust my sound here? Where is it that you can go, um, in order to, in order to be effective? Well, there's really only two options. You can either camp the one and two line and get, you know, and when most people do that, they just lose the game because they sit back and don't do much. Or you can go up to the hill on the, on the zero, on the nine zero line. Now, while the medium, while the middle of the map is important for medium tanks and, you know, relatively agile heavy tanks, the middle of the map is a two-way street because, yes, it can get fire down on both, both flanks, the one and two line and the zero line. However, it can also be shot at from people on the hill. And in that sense, it's a two, it's... It's kind of a two-way street. And so, I'm in my Lerva. It's, not the fa it's definitely not the fastest. The tier eight, uh, tier 8 premium German tank. Now, we're in, a tier t we're in a Tier 8 maximum game. So, this is a strong matchup for the Lerva. Now, playing, playing the hill is, is kind of risky. Especially if your enemies know what they're doing. Now, luckily for me in this match, the enemies in all honesty, weren't very good, so I was able to make the most of this position. Um, in in games where the enemies, where the enemies um, are more, I guess, tenacious in their spotting, you this is a very high risk position because when you're in. Now we're on, and this is encounter, obviously. So a lot of the fighting is going to be done around the cap. There's a lot of people camping the one-two lines, though, on both teams. Now I'm with Mojo, who's in his T28. Really, the only place for him to go in, a, in that slow tank sir, is the one-and-two line. Although it is possible for him to come and work this ridge here, or just come into the cap. However, like I said, people from the hill can fire down into the middle of the map, and that includes this lane here. Um, now. Like I said, if enemies are a little bit more tenacious in their spotting, it puts you at risk when you go up to this position here. If you're in the middle of the map and you start getting shot at, it's relatively easy to back down the side of the hill there and use the berm over here as cover in order to not get shot. However, you have to if you're in a position on the top of the hill, it's a long way to go to get into cover from people shooting you in the middle. So it's a little bit of a risky um, maneuver to do. Now, someone's on the cap. We're not sure who it is yet. They haven't been spotted. Um, but Archito went into the mat, went into the center to, con to uh, contest it. Our team actually wasn't was pretty good. Um, you could see that the only reason why this position is working is because we have a lot of we have a lot of people in the middle. Now, I am engaging this. I'm engaging this T44 here. Um, in the, who is on the hill now? I am spotting for the people in the middle of the map. The people in the middle of the map can therefore shoot up at this T44, and they can hit the C25. However, these these tanks here, if they spot them, the E25 and the T44 and whatever else is up here can shoot down on them as well. And so that's why these two positions can counter each other if the enemies are are doing what they're supposed to. Now, this T-44 is playing rather aggressive, so yes, he is spotting me for people in the middle of the map, so I have to take him out quickly. I missed that shot. He puts two into me. Now, you'll notice I am getting shot at from the people in the middle of the map, so I have to get... Now, they're missing, but I do have to get into a better, uh, into a better hold down position here. That shot probably got eaten up by the berm. However, you can see I can put fire on these guys in the middle now. I'm not being lit, so I can fire at them with impunity as long as my team keeps them lit, which they are doing a pretty damn good job of. 
There's an ELC sitting still in the middle of the map, so I put one into him and basically reset all of his cap points. Now he could light me, so I want to just take him out of the fight. Take him out. Um, however, we did lose the Cheeto, who was on the cap. Now the Tiger... Now these guys are being very aggressive from the middle, and they you, you would think that they would be aware that I'm here in the middle of the map, locking them down, and probably that my team on the other flank would also have shots on them too, if you push up that far. But, but I take out the Tiger too. Um, now there's a Cromwell and a 5100 in the middle of the map. Now this is where I make a pretty big mistake. I am feeling very confident about uh, pushing up this hill now and giving these guys targets. However, I take a bounce from the T-44s, who is somewhere out there. The T-28, I decide to have a slugfest with the T-28. However, I completely forget just how fast the T-28 reloads in comparison to its to the T-28 prototype, which has the turret. That is, that is the trade-off. The T-28 might not have a turret, but it has a ridiculous rate of fire and very good gun handling on that 128 millimeter, which means he just put three shots into me. Two of them, well, only two of them, about penetrated, but he just put thir uh, two shots into me, and I'm now one shot for him, and basically two shot for anything else. So I'm not feeling too clever anymore. My team was busy taking on people in the middle of the map. They were busy countering the people in the mid. So they weren't exactly putting effective fire on me, but I'm like, all right, screw this. Um, I'm going to take a different approach. Now, there's no one for my, really, for my team to be w worried about. So I back down. Now I'm hull down in the Lova, and the Lova does have a very good turret. And my team is putting effective fire into them, into this guy. I put one into a Scapola and take him out. Good fire support from my guys in the middle of the map there. And now I'm going to try and give them some fire support. Trying to shoot at the turret of this Cromwell. However, I make a mistake. I could have easily taken out this 5100, but I just blind fired him. And now I have to wait to reload. Lova, with my current setup, has a 10 second reload approximately. 10.13 seconds. But I reload in time. And I'm able to take out that tier, and then able to take out that tier eight medium uh, heavy tank. They take out the Cromwell, and that's all they had for the middle of the map. However, this T44 is now being pretty aggressive. I'm requesting fire at him. Put one into the into his lower hull, trying to angle my armor against him. However, he is fast, and he is getting around me. But I do, I am able to take him out. At the cost of taking a re of taking some return fire myself. Now, um, my guys are taking some fire from that E25 apparently, and they're, they've asked me to find him. Now the T44 just rushed me, but I will definitely um, spot this guy for my team, assuming he's there. My basically all the tanks that take the middle are generally going to get beaten up, as well as the people that go to the hill. It's just the nature of this map. You will take damage when you go to either of these positions. I find the E25. However, I spot a much juicier target, the artillery. Now that was some lag there. He didn't. He appeared a little bit after I pointed in his direction. I guess that's just a server issue. But he the already disappears. <laughs> So I put one into the E25. Now I figure that the e, the Artie the Artie honestly didn't do a very good job this game, but he's still a threat. I'm one shotable easily for that S51, so I want to take him out. There he is. Spot him and secure the kill on him. There really is nothing here um, left, and all the enemy tanks are their lower tier vehicles that are on the 1 and 2 line, so this game is pretty much in the bag. Now you can see, if you noticed in there, if you noticed there, around this area, a tree went down. 
and I was kind of skeptical about moving into that lo about moving over this hill. I figured that the E25 would be waiting at the bottom of it, but I saw that tree go down, so I blind fire it. I blind fire the berm, and I know that he has been that he uh, that he has gone over the berm now, and is probably going to support the other flank. Mojo's doing some good work over on the other flank, and. This is pretty much uh, wrapped up and in the bag. Now that's a, that's a good thing to note. Make sure that you keep an eye out for trees down uh, from the other from the enemy team, because that's a good indication of enemy movement. Always pay attention to when trees and other things get destroyed in the environment, because even though you can't see them doesn't mean that there's not something there. The E25 comes over to get a cheeky shot on me. Luckily, he bounces off my gun mantle. Um, I come over here, and I don't quite have the engine power to get over this such a steep incline. Um, the Walker Bulldog gets spotted. Coming over, probably to get into cover. He takes a big hit from Mojo, who puts, uh, who puts one into him from the 1-2 line. Panther is still out in the middle of the map there. Now this actually isn't as this is actually much closer than I thought. I mean, yeah, we still have two of our good tier eights left, but it is technically they are, they are only losing by two tanks, and one of our vehicles is an artillery piece. I didn't actually realize it was this close at the time. Um, however, at this point, it's pretty much squarely in our favor. Two tier sevens against two tier eights, two tier sevens, and a tier seven already. So it's pretty much in the bag. Now, I don't want to go over that rise because I know that the Bulldog can kill me, if, especially if he's loaded premium ammunition. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to sit here and proximity spot him so that Mojo can get shots on him. That's I guess that's what he doesn't realize is that he can he's still lit, and so the rest of my team can shoot at him. Mojo fires and misses, and I guess he's just going to give me a steal all by shooting at my gun. I mean, okay. Not my problem. But he takes a hit from Mojo. He moves on. He decides to... He says, screw that. Tries to come over to kill me. And I take him out for the, for the victory. <laughs> so anyway, guys. That's the other side of Prokhorovka. Um... That's generally a good... I would recommend heavy tanks um, on this map go to that hill. Um, because, like, you know, it, it is kind of a campy map. I, I will agree. And the really the only people... The, the only tanks that can really make complete use of this map are the mediums. So when you're in a heavy, you're rather restricted in where you can go. It's not advisable that you go to the middle um, unless you're in a faster, more agile heavy that can acquire targets more effectively. Um, and so generally slower vehicles like the Lova, um, you know, generally are more suited for one of the other two flanks. And I generally like to stay away from the one, two lines. Um, the nine zero is definitely a better place to go. However, remember it's a two way street. You can get shots onto the enemies in the middle. However, if you're getting lit by people on the hill, you can still take shots from people in the middle. So you got to remember that when playing this map. If you get lit, make sure to back down into cover where you can't get shot at from the middle if you know that enemies are going there. And in this game, if you have good players that are willing to spot the middle for you, you can do a lot of damage from that hill. Um, it's not as easy to do when there's better players that are more active in spotting you. However, you do have to go, you do have to take that position because you don't want to give the enemies on the hill free shots at your guys in the middle. So it is a good place to go to contest. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Silly me, I completely forgot about the after action report. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the after action report. Uh, I managed to, from that position, Managed to do 3,029 damage in my tier 8 premium. Uh, 7 kills uh, for 1,422 XP. With 4 Battle Hero Awards. Spartan, Brothers in, Ar uh, Brothers in Arms, because Mojo managed to pick up 3 kills himself during this game. Uh, Steel Wall and Top Gun. 
Um, too bad that they still don't have the Bolters medal in the game, otherwise I would have gotten that too. Uh, anyway, fired 23 shots at range most more than most of the time. We only hit 16 of the 15, and 15 of those penetrated. Um, however, we did um, bounce quite a lot of shots, 1450 damage incoming, and we managed to spot 1781 points worth of damage because uh, our guys in the middle were giving us some pretty good fire support. Um, so anyway, guys, now that that is over, uh, and in this premium tank, this game gave me quite the nice payout. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Fine, now I'll see you next time, and I hope you enjoyed. Take care.